Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. It's wonderful to be back with you here on Points of Light Radio and continuing our fellowship and our journey. You often hear me say this, but this is another one of those segments that I'm very excited to bring you. And the reason for that is we're going to be trying to, we're going to be doing several things here. First of all, we're going to be trying to answer a question that you've heard me ask here many, many times with several different guests here on Points of Light Radio. Well, actually more than just several. And that question quite simply is, why do people who embark on their fraternal journeys, who join these different fraternal organizations, why do they not take the next step into appendant bodies of these organizations? For instance, with the Freemasons, why do so many not go to Scottish Rite, Royal Arch? Or, well, that's a not an dependent body, Royal Arch, but you know, but you know, onto the Order of the Secret Monitor, things like that, the Sojourners, and so on. Why do they not take that next step? In other words, why do they not take their fraternal journey to the next level? Now, the other thing that you're going to see here on Points of Light Radio is we are going to be retracing our steps a little bit. Just a tiny bit, but you're going to be uh, seeing some excerpts from previous segments of Points of Light Radio, but also you're going to be introduced to a future guest that we'll be having on here. And we'll probably be seeing him a little more often. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be right up there with my old buddy, uh, Owen Snowden. <clears throat> so the first... Uh, I've broken uh, our journey down, our today down into three parts. First of all, we're going to, like I said, three different guests, okay? The first will be Sir Knight Michael Thomas. Now, if you recall, we fellowshiped with him on July 18th, 2022, and he's a member of the Royal Black Preceptory and Provincial Grand Master of the Grand Black Chapter of Ontario West. The second guest will be Michael Duke. Now, if you recall, we fellowshiped with him on May 22nd of 2022. And he was an order of the, he was a member of the Order of the Secret Monitor in the United Kingdom. Absolutely beautiful, these two organizations that you just saw here. And if you haven't seen these two particular segments before, or even if you have, I encourage you to go back and review them a little bit, right? Now, the third guest that you will see featured on here He's a sneak peek. There's a full interview I did with him, but you're going to see an excerpt from that interview. And this gentleman is named Joseph Benton. He's with the Odd Fellows, and he's the past grand of his lodge. He's also a past chief patriarch. He's a chevalier with the Patriarch's Militant. He's also a member of the Rebecca's, right? I want, I'm going to have him back just to talk about the Rebecca's. I'm going to tell you that right now. <clears throat> but... This is going to be fun, retracing our steps, but also trying to answer a question, right? I look forward to this. So, as I always ask you before we embark on our journey, are you still thirsty for knowledge? Are you still searching for the light? Then you just trim your lamp and follow me. So, first... As I said, I'm going to introduce you to Sir Knight Thomas. So why don't more Orangemen uh, take that next step and join the Black, shall we say? Uh, Some don't feel the need to join anything more. Some are just happy at being the Orange. Some view the Black as being a little too much. There's too many degrees. (laughs) And uh, some, as uh, you'll find across most paternals, look at it as another another night of meetings, 
and more dues to pay. And these are the same guys that when you talk about raising their dues by $2, have an argument for three months in the lodge about why it should be raised. <laughs> And now, Michael Duke. Oh. Now, what are the qualifications for membership in the Order of the Secret Monitor? Now, I know you say you have to be invited in, but can you say just be, what do you have to have all three degrees of Craft Lodge, or can you go and join right from first degree? What? No, uh, here in the UK, what we do have is we have to, you have a, a, a person has to be invited, but he has to have a, a third degree. He has to be a, a master mason before he gets invited. And uh, as long as you have been a master mason for at least uh, four weeks upwards, then you can be invited into it. Okay, so how, how long have most people, though, that you're finding, have they been in a year or so? As, yes. As master, yeah. Yeah, most people have actually been, uh, we, we don't take it uh, quickly. So what happens is uh, we, we let the master masons uh, sort of like settle for a while into their newest degree. And then uh, we usually wait six months to about a year before we get them in. Or, you know, that depends. I got invited after about more than three, five years because wow. I've never met anyone really. So only when I met one and I mentioned my interest in it and that's when i got uh invited into it so again if you don't mention it then you don't people will not know okay um, why why do you think that is that they really don't talk a whole lot about because i don't i do know over here i've met freemasons over here when i mentioned the order of the secret monitor they're like what but what <laughs> like is it just just the way it is is a little more secretive or it's just they don't do maybe is what they should do market it shall we say well i think there's two personally i think there's two aspects into it one is uh, if you are to be friendly you have to be open up open with, with what your interest is number one number two in any organization especially in freemasonry it has to come from within from the individual interest rather that it's better to to for for somebody to ask than to be asked. So, yeah. so that's generally the principle that is uh, uh, floating around in the whole uh, of, of Freemason really. It's better to ask than to be asked because it comes from within you, from the, from the individual person. And that's better than um, asking somebody to, if they would like to join. So they might say yes, simply because out of respect or out of courtesy to the individual. But if it comes from the individual himself, then that is a much better way of, of um, getting that individual in. And as I promised, finally, my f new friend, Joseph Benton. Now, the one thing I, I've, I've been wondering about is why don't people, more people, shall we say, that are in the Odd Fellows, why do they not join the encampment or the patriarchs militants or any of these other appendant shall we say bodies why do they not do that well i think that you're pointing at something that's just kind of a general problem for uh fraternities in general and that is participation so whenever you've got a lodge of over a hundred people like in my little town that i live in you know there's it's like 30 years ago there were like probably I don't know, a thousand or so people who were citizens of the little town that I live in. Now, in the general area, it's over 50,000. But back then, when they had hundreds and maybe into, um, maybe, maybe when they got near a thousand, um, they had over 150 men who were members of the Odd Fellows. Wow. So by, by a percentage of the people who lived in the city, it was more than one out of 10. And this is back around 1930. Now, if you look at the population now uh, and you, you, you figure the same um, you know, percentage, we should have at least 50 times the number of people that we do now so, uh, or of 150. So 50 times 150 would be what? I, 7,500 or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's the, the popularity of Oddfellows itself has shrunk to a point where 
we no longer have 150 people and we now have about 30. We just crossed 40 in our lodge. We, we, we've had a bit of a resurrection of, of membership. Uh, when I joined, we were just under 30. And now we're over 40, which is really great. Um, but it's really because of participation that, that people, more people don't participate in the encampment and the Patriarch's Militant. Back when you had over 100 people in a single lodge, we had like odd fellows bands there you know it was very common for you to have a band of people who were in your lodge uh not unlike how it is if you go to a church of over 150 people you have a a band Choir, yeah or a band yeah yeah you know a uh, guitar and drums and you know singing and all that stuff that was what odd fellows was more like of course it was brass instead of electrified but you know um it just in terms of participation, when you had over 150 people, those 150 people in the lodge would be interested in being elevated above the regular meeting and it being more involved in the actual politics of the lodge itself. And they would join an encampment hosted in the same lodge. So it's kind of like the, the, the cream of the crop would be in the encampment. And the same for Patriarchs Militant. Those people were the ones that were typically veterans. Um, one of the great things about the Patriarchs Militant, which I don't know if you mentioned this in, in your, you know, you talked about this before, but you can wear your military ribbons with the Patriarchs Militant uniform. So, um, and it's authorized, which is really pretty wow. cool. Yeah. So um, the, you, you had that, you know, number of people in in a, uh, in a canton, which is the unit of a patriarch's militant, you had a canton and you had an encampment when you had enough people in your regular Odd Fellows Lodge. There you go, brothers and sisters. Two former guests, three different appended bodies. Right? I think the answer to why people don't join could be different for everybody, right? The, why they don't join these appended bodies, um, right? I will say this. And you've heard me say it before. We don't just fill lodge rooms and then leave it at that. Okay. We don't. Okay. We need to keep members informed of the next possible steps on their journey into these appended bodies, right? If fraternalism isn't growing, it dies. I would hate to see these appended bodies, these beautiful appended bodies with all of their, the enriching experience that they offer, I would hate to see them die out, right? Now, some things that you heard here, Sir Knight Thomas says, Many don't join because of money, okay? You know, it's, it's going to cost some extra money to join, okay? You, if you, there again, part of that needs to be addressed with the appended body. It should, for, to me, fraternalism should be available to everybody, okay? And if you have a poor brother or sister in your lodge that you don't, that can't afford to join, an appended body, perhaps members should step up and help that person, right? If there's, if a brother or sister is struggling financially, you know, one member suffers, we all suffer with it. We, we work with, as the Bible says, and we need to step in, right? Um, I personally, and this is me, I'm a member of a number of fraternal orders. I'm not going to get into them here because I don't want it to interfere with this segment. But the, I have joined some of their appendant bodies. And I will say this, if you're worried about the money, if you have the money, you are really selling yourself short when you don't join at least one appendant body. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because oftentimes, once you enter the appendant bodies, I know personally what I found was the degrees were that much more enriching. Um, they're often a little deeper. And I keep saying this, you get a lesson from them that you can oftentimes apply to your life. And that's just, that's just me. Okay. 
but uh, there again, I don't want to keep harping on ritual work and things like that, but it's true. Mr. Duke talked about the fact that the he some people are unaware that the Order of the Secret monitors around. Now, I understand where, you know, Freemasons have this saying of, to be one, you ask one. But if you don't know what's there, how do you know to ask? Okay? These appended bodies need to be at least offered to members of the primary lodges. They do. And I will, I will say this, personally speaking, um, the lodge I belong, my, my primary lodge for one of the organizations I belong to, um, the, the, uh, one of the leadership from the appended body was very welcoming, telling me that I should move up and he encourages most people who join the primary lodge to move up to that appended body. And I really appreciate that. Right. I, now I love how people talk about time. It takes more time. Mr. Benton is at least offering some solutions when it comes to time. Okay. How to make it a little less time consuming. And you've heard that me talk about that as well here on Points of Light Radio, some of my guests. The amount of time. Perhaps it's it, or perhaps we need to make it make uh make it he's he's offering Mr. Benton's offering solutions to make it less time consuming. Right? Right? Not a bad idea. Now right I, and I'm gonna say Mr. Benton We'll be back here. I think he's, like I keep saying, I think he's going to be up there right with my buddy, Owen Snowden. I really do. I think he's going to be a repeat guest, and he will be, actually. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Uh, made a friend with that one, right? But let me ask you, why have you, the listener and viewer, why have, if you're in fraternalism, why have you not taken that next step into an appendant body of your organization? Right. I have heard now members of the craft feel free to give me your opinion, but I have heard, for instance, with Freemasons that the Royal Arch answers some of the questions that are left over from the Master Masons degree. Like I said, my friends my, from the craft Freemasons feel free to offer your opinion on that. Right. But, you know. Those of you who haven't joined an appended body, are you planning to? And if so, which one? I welcome your opinions, your comments in the comment section of this particular segment of Points of Light Radio. And moving forward, in the future, I intend to bring you a segment called Restore the Brotherhood. Right? How do we make these lodges feel more fam family-like, right? Drop your opinion there too, right? <laughs> but uh, this was interesting, retracing our steps and meeting a new friend here, right? But before I go, I want to remind you that this segment is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. I also, as I keep saying, I welcome your comments and input, right? You can follow Points of Light Radio on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash points of light radio. My Twitter handle is at PO Light Radio. You can see the link to my Spotify channel as well as my Points of Light Radio store. Brothers and sisters, it's been a pleasure fellowshipping with you and bringing you this segment. I'm sorry to part with you, but until we meet again, just step into the light.